Bingle ne manga, egebo jokele de brona kaka lite popo poroko to sekeli ne manga, egebo jokolo de brina kaloto begelia, agaba zokolo de brana kakoli de baba, engebo zokolo de brina kakolo de bojekele de brina, angaba zoto, egele ne manga, egele de bobo boroko to sakali de babrena kenkele de bajokolo, engebo roko to sekeli de baba, egebo jekele de brina, langro de sokolo de brina kalite baba baba, eng. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that we are accepted in the beloved. Blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenlies in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the privilege to learn to be equipped. Thank you that my mouth is, is empowered by your spirit to communicate effectively with the understanding of your people. I decree that veils full of clarity comes by your word. And by the end of this service, nobody lives here the same way they came. We give you praise, glory, and honor that your word is growing mightily and prevailing all over the nations of the earth. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven, let's release our faith together. So say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer sees a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, the social media community. We want to welcome all of you. We're so glad to have all of you in the service today. And we want to welcome the entire Acquire Bomb State community connected to this service by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Acquire Bomb, Passion FM, Inspiration FM, Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service, guys. Help me invite a friend, a family member, somebody you love. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. Our social media community, like you've always done, I'd like us to do it again today. Let's get this word to the ends of the earth. Help me share the video on your page. Share with as many groups as are on your page. Join as many groups as possible. And of course, make sure you help us put the videos on monogram, telegram. Drop them on WhatsApp groups. Let's flood the entire blue marble planet with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. All our campuses around the world and all their house centers, wherever you're watching this service right now, we want you to know we're so glad to welcome all of you guys. Fasting your seatbelts is going to be an exciting adventure in the word of his grace. Grab your pen, your notebook, and your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word tonight. <clears throat> Amen. All right? Tonight is the last part of this series the last part tonight because tomorrow i'm beginning something new in the services so tonight is the last part of this particular series and i believe in a few months from now before the year is over we will look at wisdom for living series three because there's a lot more to talk about i've not talked about um, um uh you know um single guys single ladies I've not even talked about other issues that are related to the marriage union. I just dealt with an overview of relationships as it re relates to the believer in Christ Jesus. So we're going to have series three of wisdom for living. Maybe even series four, you know, <laughs> there's so much to talk about. But we just keep going as the Lord enables us and cover areas that, you know, the Holy Ghost reveals to us are areas that are very specifically you know, led by the spirit to be dealt with in each particular series we teach in this house. So tonight, Wisdom for Living Series 2, Nurturing Relationships Effectively. Matthew 28 verse 18. Matthew chapter 28 verse number 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we, we, we've been examining how to nurture effective relationships. And some people, all they knew before marriage is, 
Don't have sex. Don't have sex. Don't have sex. Don't have sex. Then they got married. Have sex. Have sex. Have sex. Have sex. That's all they know. So when you're talking about marriage relationships, all they're thinking of is, since I'm not yet married, don't have sex. Don't have sex. Don't have sex. Okay, now that I'm married, have sex. Have sex. Have sex. <laughs> So some people don't know how to really handle relationships biblically as believers in Christ Jesus. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We do not allow the world squeeze us into their mold as to how to relate. The Christian faith covers every area of the believer's life. Every area, spirit, soul, and body. You know, all that concerns a believer is covered by virtue of the new birth. We have explained that heaven and earth came together in the resurrection. Heaven and earth came together. Immortality and mortality came together in the resurrection. That is the temple. That is what we call God's marriage in Christ. God's marriage to us in Christ. Verse 19 of that Matthew 28 says, teaching. So to teach, to teach people. You know, to cause them to be students. To cause them to learn. Verse 20 of that Matthew chapter 28 says, he uh, says, uh, so church is a place to learn relationships. Verse 20, lo, I am with you always to the end of the earth. So church is a place to learn relationships. Not in a blog or newspaper or magazine. Not on the fanciful quotes on Twitter. Even though I hear that Twitter is no more in Nigeria. But we stick to what the word teaches. We stick to what the word teaches. We have said that the resurrection is God's friendship. The resurrection is God's marriage. The resurrection is God's kingdom. And the resurrection is God's nation. We learn relationships from God. We learn how to relate from God. In other words, the resurrection of Jesus is God's relationship with man. The resurrection of Jesus is God's relationship with man. Look at Amos chapter 3 verse number 3. Amos chapter 3 verse number 3. Mm -mm. Amos 3.3. 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Then we looked at two words. The word walk together, which is halak, to go on the same plane. Can two function on the same plane except they be agreed? The word agreed is the word yard, which means you are united. You are united from the word your chart. Now, I've taught all of this in the past few days. So, if you are not here, you can get the material to get all of the notes together. I gave you the illustration of how I missed my way in London. Got in the train because I'm never conversant with the London trains. Even though they give me the, 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 the maps, they tell me about line one, line two, line three, line four, line five. I've never been able to get myself into one of those things and understand what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, uh, it's always just like that for me. So somebody has to help me. But on this particular trip, we decided to navigate our way ourselves. And we got in the train that was going to, to, to Paris. And then when we were just getting out of London to go on the international line, somebody now told us, you're in the wrong place. Where are you guys going to? And we told him somewhere within London. He said, ah, you're already out of London. You're already on your way out of the country. And we said, no, that, we're not going anywhere. We just want to go to this place. The guy said, okay, get cross here, cross there. Then join this particular train. If it is not this train, don't enter. All right, okay, so we cross. And then even when we cross, we kept asking people. So if we're going to London now, what are we supposed? We have to confirm from three to four people. One's beaten, twice shy. <laughs> Now we were in the train, we were comfortable, we were treated nicely, we were enjoying the fun, but we arrived at the wrong place. What, what, of what good is it that you are comfortable, you are enjoying fun to arrive at where you don't need to get to? You've wasted time and you may never find your way back. 
You know, so that's why it's important that you can only travel with somebody that is going to where you're going in relationships. No matter how comfortable and how much you enjoy the treatment, that was not where you were going to. You were in the wrong train or you were in the wrong journey or you were in the wrong relationships. So the same way with friendship. You don't get overt overtly sentimental about friendship. That has nothing to do with your purpose. Don't get too emotional and excited with a friendship that has nothing to do with your purpose. Because in life, you must know your identity and you must know your destination. The moment you become friends with someone's enemy, you are his enemy. We said that yesterday. Jesus said, I mean James speaking said, friendship with the world is enmity with God. A friend of the world is an enemy of God. You can be my friend and at the same time be the friend of my enemy. If you're a friend of my enemy, you're automatically my friend. And if you're my friend, you can be a friend to my enemy. All right, so we established that yesterday. Friendship with the world is the word philia in the Greek. It means fondness, affection, affinity, desire, delight. The word philia, fondness, affection affinity desire delight with the world friendship with the world fondness with the world being affectionate with the world building an affinity with the world desiring what the world desires or having delight in what the world delights in is enmity with god so therefore we began to speak about having values relationship is built on values your values will have to be what shapes your friendship not your feeling not i like the way he makes me laugh i like the way she makes me laugh that's not the basis for building relationship relationships are built on values can two work together except they are united now we said in the resurrection we have the marriage of god with us we have a kingdom in the resurrection, we are a nation. In the resurrection, we are neighbors. We began to examine that the highest relationship you can have in all of relationships, whether with your neighbor, your wife, your husband, your nation, is friendship. Friendship. Even if you're a husband and wife, you need to be friends. If you're neighbors, you, you, you've got to be friends. So friendship is the high level relationship we said you must understand that people go through different seasons of life and you must find out how do i navigate through these different seasons with a friend how do i navigate through the different seasons of life with a friend we also said you don't let your friends choose you you choose your friends you choose your friends so identify a friend and you do it by the spirit of God. Identify a friend and you do it by the spirit of God. You are born of the spirit of God. So you cannot do it without the spirit of God. And we said yesterday you have limited time, you have limited resources. You can only do much. What am I saying? If you try to be friends with everybody... You will end up being a friend of nobody. You will be wasted. You will spend you will spend yourself and lose all your potentials because you must choose and select who your friends are. You can be friendly, cordial, you can be nice with other people, you can even be brotherly with other people, but they cannot be your intimate friends. We saw Jesus, he had the crowd, he had 12 he had 70, he had three, he had one. It took Jesus, I mean Judas Iscariot, to identify Jesus' hideout. So you must choose your friends and it must be by the spirit of God. Who is a friend? A friend is somebody you do life with. Somebody you go through life with. A friend is somebody you do life with somebody you go through life with that's a friend and it's not dependent on reading the same course in the university or belonging to the same family or you know um, 
being career friends. Oftentimes, friendships you build out of enmity with others. You know? All the guy becomes for you is a spite value. You only got him and use him to spite somebody. You really didn't need the friendship. You know, um, don't make friends out of spite or spiting people. You will end up spiting yourself. <laughs> you know? Don't allow anyone make you their friend out of spite value. Don't make friends to get back at anyone. Don't make friends to try to get back at anyone. Don't get married so you can prove a point. <laughs> Don't get married so you can prove a point. Don't get into a relationship because someone broke up with you. And so you broke up with me. Okay, I will marry your friend and prove to you that I can marry somebody close to you. All that is foolishness. Make sure you have your choices are led by the Spirit of God. Secondly, we talked about partnership. We say computers network. People partner. You cannot partner with your computer. Because even if you ask Google questions and Google answers you, Google doesn't talk back to you. So the best of computers and devices is to network. It takes human beings to partner. So endeavor to be conscious of relating with humans more than a device. Be sure that you are partnering with friends. God in the spirit became a man. Heaven and earth. Friends are those you share life with. And you know devices are actually turning us into very funny people. Many people don't like physical friends. They like it online. Because it is risk free. Online friends don't require any commitment. <laughs> you know, it is just freelance. And if people don't go to church, they stay home to watch online. Then what is ecclesiology about? Ecclesiology is about our coming together in interact. Pray together with one another. Strengthen one another. Inspire one another. Challenge one another. Disciple people. Go out for evangelism together. Pray together. Because there is, there is power in coming together as a family. So, the online method is tampering with our friendships. Don't get into a relationship in a selfish way. What am I going to get? What's in it for me? Instead of asking what's in it for me, why don't you tell yourself, what am I bringing into this relationship? What value am I bringing into this relationship? In John 15, 13, Jesus said, I mean, Brother John says, a friend lays down his life for his friends. Look at the kind of people Jesus laid down his life for. Peter, Thomas, Judas. <laughs> Those are the people he laid his life. Friendship could mean some will deny you, some will betray you, and some will even run away. So expect these things when you're open to, to building friendship with people. Some will betray you, some will deny you, some will even run away. That happened to Jesus in test moments. And instead of Jesus abandoning them, he strengthened them. He will say to somebody like Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. Hallelujah. That's why it has to be led by the Spirit. You cannot separate the leading of the Spirit from your friendship. You are born of the Spirit. How many of you here know this evening and all over the world that God is interested in who you do life with? Yes. God is interested in who you go through life with. God is interested in who you marry. And God is interested in who your friends are. 
God will not tell you who to marry. It's ultimately your choice. But God is interested in whom you choose. Because who you choose to marry will determine whether you fulfill the purpose of God for your life or not. God is very interested in who you marry, who you make your friend. God is interested in it. Because that will determine whether you succeed in fulfilling God's plan for your life or you do not succeed. Please pay attention. A friend is an encourager. Friends are not those who tell you a lie. Encouragement doesn't mean sweet talk. Encouragement simply means they help you to do what you ought to do. Because friends want you to be what God wants you to be. Make me what you want me to be in my generation. Friends want you to be what God wants you to be. Friends will help you get to where God wants you to get to. A friend is an encourager, but a friend is not someone who tells you lies. Sometimes a friend like the mother eagle can throw you to the wind. A key thing about friendship is God's plan. If I can't find you in God's plan for my life, you cannot be my friend. That's a key thing. I've got to be able to find you in God's plan for my life. If I look at God's plan for my life, I can't find you there. You can't be my friend. And if you also look at God's plan for your life, you don't find me, please don't make me your friend. Some guy wanted to marry his sister and the sister looked at him and said to the brother, I looked into my future in my consecration with God. I can't find you there. Uh, that's deep. She wanted to marry him. I mean, he wanted to marry her. Okay? And she told him, Brother, when I was in consecration and prayer, I began to look into what God will have me do in the future. I can't see you there. We can't marry. I am ministry driven. You are money driven. We can't meet. When we say evangelism, you are busy chasing money and busy winning souls. We have no meeting point. I'm sorry. We can't get married. Every child of God should be able to look into the plan of God. Into the bigger picture of what God will have you do. And it's easy once you know what God wants to have you do. To know who cannot have a future with you and who can have a future with you. That's very important. <clears throat> Friends are those who encourage me to do the will of God. You know, friends are those who know what God is telling me for the future. Those are my friends. Because Jesus said, I call you no more servants. But because a servant doesn't know what his friend does. But I call you my friends because you know what I do. You can't be my friend if you do not know what God's will is for my future. Oh yes. Oh yes. I've had friends who didn't last because when I looked into my future, I couldn't see them in my future. I just ended it. I couldn't see them. When I pray in the spirit, 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 and I look at my future. And I see the things that God will have me do. I can't see them in it. <laughs> so there's no point for relationship. Are we teaching good? Please, that's important. Brother Paul knew what Timothy will do. He kept telling Timothy, <laughs> stay up the gift. Stay up the gift. I can see that there's a future with you, Timothy. 
Friends keep you in check. Friends are those also who know that God talks through them to you. God's plan, therefore, is a vital for friendship. You must know the plan of God. Before you start making friends, before you start looking for who to marry or who will not marry you, first of all, locate God's plan for your life. That's critical. So number one, identify your friends. Number two, partner with your friends. Number three, be an encouragement to your friends. Number four, listen carefully. Friendship requires an authentic love walk. Authentic love walk. Hear me well. Nollywood, Hollywood, Bollywood don't have love. Love is only in Christ. Love is only in Christ. And you know, not long ago, I began to hear people talk about self-love, self-love, self-love. Huh. There is nothing like self-love in the Bible. Love yourself. Is love as I have loved you. Which means self-love is demonic and selfish. Love as I have loved you. Loving others the way Christ loves you is Bible love. And that's genuine love. Don't allow culture to color your love. Let the covenant of the love of God in Christ be how you see love. Love is forgiving. Love is forgiving. And sometimes, you know, we begin to see personality threats in our love relationships. Yeah, girl, see that guy is always smiling. <laughs> He's very humorous. When I meet with him, he makes me laugh. I forget everything. You know, someone always smiling. Someone who never opposes anything. Could be a trap. And some women and ladies fall into the trap. Then after they marry, they find a monster of a man. Love has to be authentic. Don't make believe love. You know? Friendship has nothing to do with spending money. Friendship has nothing to do with spending money. He's buying you everything doesn't mean he's your friend. He's buying you everything doesn't mean he's your friend. But when there is friendship, money will be spent. But friendship is not spending money. But when there is friendship, money will be spent. Yes? And any friendship that does not have money spent in it, be careful. Be careful. Praise God. Love is forgiving. Jesus said 70 times 7. Love is merciful. When you love people, you are merciful towards them. Love is long-suffering. Love endures. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 to 8. Give me the amplified. Then I will read it in the message after amplified. 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 4 to 8. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. Love is not boastful or vainglorious. Does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant and inflated with pride. Love is not rude or mannerly and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, 
but rejoices when right and truth prevails. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It's ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances. And it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails. Never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and passed away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and ceased. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. Give me the message translation. Same verses. First Corinthians 13 verse 4. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't stroth, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't reveal when others grow well, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, Always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit, but love never dies. Hallelujah. And the woman said to me, Papa, the way my husband is behaving, my love is dying. You never had love. You never had love. You never had love. If his behavior is killing your love, you never had love. You had emotions. Love is not feelings. Love is Christ's life in us. It never dies. It never dies. Love never dies. Did we see that? It never dies. Love is trusting. Love believes the best. Thinks no evil. Love endures. Love is also confrontational and engaging. Sometimes you love somebody very well. He does something stupid. You tell him, I will slap you. I will slap you. He's your friend. But you're giving him tough love. Yeah. Why are you disgracing yourself? I never know you to be like this. Stop it. It's not every time that love will be, hey, how now? Are you okay? No. There are times when love is very tough. Stop that. Fool. Fool. Jesus called his friends fools. Hmm. It's tough love. And it's very good. It's very good. Sometimes you need to hear those words to make you think well. Sometimes you need to hear those words to bring you down where you can reason well. Because sometimes you get inflated and you're floating. Somebody needs to bring you down and keep you down and tell you stop that nonsense. I will slap you if you try it again. Don't do that. You are bigger than that. I'm teaching here. Yeah. Love is confrontational. Love is engaging. Love is not hypocrisy. Jesus confronted his followers. Will you also go in John chapter 6? Will you also go with them? His friend said to him, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We're not going to go with them. We didn't come for bread and fish. We came for what you have to say. Teaching good? Some people you talk to them like that, they think you don't love them. So they look for people who flatter them. You know, flatterers, they flatter them. Tell them, how do I look? He say, even the queen of England, when she sees you now, she will bow. Meanwhile, you're not looking good. Instead of them to tell you, this dress you're wearing, remove it. It's not good. It doesn't fit you. He say, the queen of England, <laughs> if she sees you now, she will bow. Ah! <laughs> they flatter you. They're hypocritical. They're not genuine. Love is not hypocrisy. Job, love is genuine. Love is frank. 
Love is authentic. You should make sure you don't pretend about God's purpose for your life. If you don't like what God has called me to do, me and you cannot be friends. Yes? That's why when I started preaching the New Testament, I lost many of my friends. In fact, if not all. <laughs> I think I lost almost all my friends. Because <laughs> some of them tried to be, tag along with me for a while. Then they said, huh, the kind of phone calls I'm receiving, you better mind what you're saying, you know. <laughs> you better mind what you're saying. People are calling me from everywhere. I don't know what to answer them. Some I've told them, don't you have this number? They're, they're getting offended. So I know this one can't go anywhere with me. He can't even defend me. He's telling them to call me. Means we are not friends anymore. Because he doesn't know what I'm saying. A friend must know what I am saying and say it where it is re required. That's a true friend. So I started removing them from my phone list. They are no friends anymore. Huh. These ones have become part of my persecutors. Huh. One of them, one of them will go around telling people, uh, don't, don't mind, don't mind Abel, don't mind Abel, don't mind Abel. I don't know, I don't know who is influencing him. He's saying things he doesn't know. I have known him for long. It's just a while. He will come back to his senses. Is that a friend? Is that a friend? That, I just deleted his number from my phone deleted it completely so that when he calls i don't even know who he's calling i've not spoken to him for three years i don't need such people those are parasites those are no friends i know why he's still hanging around me because i give him money and he likes the little little money he gets from me to solve his problems but i know he's not a genuine friend so i remove his number i don't need such people on my log on, on, around my space i have limited time a day i can't waste it on parasites my time is limited 60 seconds, 24 hours. It's not even enough. And I don't have to spare for people who are not authentic. They are not genuine. They are hip hypocrites. Hypocrites. Hypo. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. You must be able to, you must like what God has called me to do to be my friend. And you know, love can prune. In John chapter 15 verse 2, John chapter 15 verse 2, King James Version, John 15 2, Jesus speaking said, put it up for me, John, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away, pruning. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So love prunes. Love purges. Friends confront you in love. Friendship is a relationship that practices the love of God in Christ without mentioning it. It's a relationship that practices the love of God in Christ without making noise about it. Glory to God. Friendship demands that a man should be loyal. A man should be committed. The love of God is not what you like to do. The love of God is what you must do. It's not what you like to do. It's what you must do. All of them, you know. How many, look at me, everybody. Have you observed, Dr. Gabriel, that at the Passover table where Jesus sat with his disciples and he said, one of you shall betray me. All of them asked, Lord, is it I? Which means all your friends have tendencies of betraying you. That's why all of them ask, Lord, is it I? Because they know that it could be any one of them. Lord, is it I? Hmm. As a serious matter. Lord, is it I? Means every human being has a tendency of betraying his friend. So, you have the responsibility... To keep your friendship by refusing to seize the opportunity of betrayal. Make up your mind, I'm not going to betray my friends. Whatever it costs, I'm going to be there for them. You know, I have been thinking about, why did Judas betray Jesus? 
Why? Some people say because she loved money. I don't think so. You know what is coming to my mind? Why Judas betrayed Jesus was, was unfulfilled expectations. <laughs> you know, Judas and the rest thought Jesus would take over the kingdom. And when he takes over the kingdom, he will appoint them as federal ministers. You understand? They had expectations. If you remember, even in Acts chapter 1, after resurrection, they were still asking Jesus, when will you restore the kingdom to Israel? That should tell you the kind of mindset they all had. But Judah's own was superior to their own. That's why when he didn't see signs of it coming to pass, he decided to compensate himself for the time he has been around Jesus. When you're in a relationship with anybody, refuse to build mega expectations so that for every little kindness, you'll be grateful. Refuse to have huge expectations. Remember, you are just friends. Don't have humongous expectations so that every little kindness you get, you'll be grateful. Because you don't have a sense of entitlement. It's so important in friendship. Glory to God. Sometimes our friends disappoint us. But that's not the basis for betrayal. What's the difference between Peter and Judas? Judas could not face what he had done wrongly. Peter faced his wrong. Peter apologized. Judas couldn't. Remember, Jesus warned Peter long ago. Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan is lusting after you. He wants to eat you up. He has, a, he has an, an unholy desire <laughs> towards you. But I've prayed for you. Please listen carefully. If you are making notes, this is a good one not to miss at all. If Twitter was on, it's a good one for tweeting. Always remember, patience does things better than anger. Patience does things better than anger. Always remember that. Patience does things better than anger. As you grow in life, you find out that you are no more re reacting to things the way you were reacting when you were younger. You're not able to tolerate. You're able to be patient. You're able to allow. But when you are younger, va, 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 every little thing, your blood is boiling. But as you mature, what anger will have done, you use patience to stretch it. And sometimes while you are being patient, things correct themselves. Things correct themselves. Love does not allow anger. Love does not. If we read it there in that scripture. Value your friends. Be there for your friends. You know, there's a spirit of witchcraft in Africa that makes people to celebrate a man after he dies. That's witchcraft. You won't tell a man good things when he's alive. When he dies, you start writing long, 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 long descriptions of what a wonderful man Maybe if you had had it when he was alive, he would live longer. It's a witchcraft spirit. Or, the money the man never saw all his life, the moment he dies, they will contribute it as a family to spend it for burial. They will even go to the village and buy land. It's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. I hope you're hearing me. It's witchcraft. Witchcraft is not flying in a dream. Those ones that fly in a dream, they are not, they are, they are kindergarten witchcraft. Real witchcraft are the people who open their eyes. They open, they are conscious. A man is alive, you don't celebrate him. Then when he dies, you throw party, you buy land, you build house in the village, you furnish the house to put his dead body. Meanwhile, when he was alive, you couldn't pay rent. You didn't even care whether his rent could be paid. But you're building him. That's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. And it's very strong in our society here in Aquaibo. Very strong. And that's why I'm, I'm saying it the way I'm saying it. Your mother in the village 
cannot even eat well. You don't care. You don't send her money. Nothing. The moment she dies, you start inviting everybody in the world. You keep up a budget of millions to spend for your poor mother. Who when she was alive never saw a million. That's witchcraft. You are taking advantage of her debt to inflate your ego. It's not love. It's witchcraft. You are taking advantage of her debt to inflate your ego. It's called the worship of the dead. You are worshipping the dead. As I begin to round up, let me quickly give you seven ways to make a bad decision. Seven ways to make a bad decision. Number one, when you make decisions too fast, I have learned that haste is not good. You will be a bad leader if you are always too fast. Learn to wait. Learn to pray. Learn to seek counsel from God. If they say, oh, if you don't bring money now, 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 you will lose the opportunity. So let it be. Let the opportunity go. Don't rush me. A man that maketh haste shall not be innocent. That's what the Bible says. He that believeth shall not make haste. So if you don't want to make a bad decision, don't, make, don't be in a hurry. Learn to wait on the Lord. And the counsel of others. Seek counsel. Seek what the word of God has to say about the matter. Have discernment. Don't be in a hurry. That's number one. Don't be in a hurry. Number two. You make a bad decision when you are too slow. Don't be in a hurry and don't be too slow. And the difference in knowing whether you are too in a hurry or too slow is to be led by the Spirit of God. If you are led by the Spirit of God, you won't be too slow. If you are led by the Spirit of God, you won't be in a hurry. You act on the word. That's number two. Number three. Don't make decisions to make people happy. My mom said, if I marry this man, she'll be happy. So let me just marry him for her. <laughs> the right decisions often are not popular. The right decisions often are not popular. People pleasing as a decision. Rarely accomplish much. People pleasing as a decision is not a decision of worth. Most times, people pleasing makes you make the worst decisions of your life. Number four, don't make decisions when you are angry because anger is a sin. If you're angry, deal with the anger first. Remember, patience does far better than anger. Patience does much better than anger. As you keep growing older, like I said, you will see that you become more patient. Number five, never make decisions alone without counsel. Of God's word. Proverbs 15 22. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 22. Mm -mm. Without counsel. Purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors. They are established. Proverbs 15 22. Without counsel. Purposes are disappointed. So a Christian must consult God's word. And God's spirit to make a decision. Number six. Don't make a decision to react. Don't make a decision to react. Be deliberate and be intentional about making decisions. Think through it. Pray through them. Then make a decision. Number seven. 
Don't make decisions out of fear. Fear shouldn't be a motivator. For God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. There is a place for the leading of God in relationships. There is a place for the leading of God in relationships. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. I'm rounding up. Are you blessed? Luke chapter 6 verse 12. Mm -mm. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. This was the all night prayer Jesus did before appointing the 12 disciples. Yet, with all the caution, he still had Judas. So supposing he didn't pray. He prayed all night. He was led by God to Judas. And he was led by God to Peter. In Luke 22, 31. Luke 22, 31 to 37. But I want to read 31. Luke 22, 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Simon, behold. Satan has desired to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. Next verse. But... I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Because the way it will happen to you, it will affect your brethren. But I've prayed for you. Yet all of these were people Jesus selected by the leading of the Spirit. So therefore, ensure that you do not despise the supernatural in relationships. Do not despise the supernatural in relationships. When people reach out to you to be your friend, don't ignore the leading of the spirit. There is a place of the inward witness. The spirit of God bearing witness with us. There is a place. There is also a place of the inward witness in how you act, even in the relationship. There are times a husband will come raging and speaking intimidatingly to the wife. And the wife could just tell him, Darling, give me just a moment. Give me a day or two. Let me pray about it. I'll bring you an answer. And there are times you don't even need to take permission. You just keep quiet. Hold your peace. And you may end up never giving him an answer. And somehow, somehow, the, the issue will be resolved. Same thing with a husband. It's not everything you answer. There are things that don't need an answer. Silence will produce an answer. But when the man is talking, you two, you boil all of you are talking. <laughs> You will get out of the spirit into the flesh. So, even within the relationship, you must be led by the spirit. There are situations that will arise. You say nothing. You just pray, 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 and quietly be looking. I had the story of Gloria Copeland. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland was acting funny at one time in their life and ministry. So, one day Gloria Copeland just came to Copeland, laid hands on him, and said, you unclean spirit, leave my husband alone. In the name of Jesus, I lose you from every satanic influence right now. In Jesus' name. <laughs> she laid hands on her husband. And the man calmed down. Then she told him, we're going on a prayer retreat. She took him. Two weeks they went to pray. When they came back, the man began to behave well. It's not only the men that lay hands on their wife. There are times a wife may have to lay hands on her husband. <laughs> Glory! Many of us need to learn how to maintain relationships by the leading of the Spirit. By the leading, James says, be, be fast to hear, but slow to speak. James 1.19 There are times you should be led before you say something. You don't like something your spouse has done. Sometimes just pray. Just pray in the spirit. If relationships are divine, they have divine rules. If relationships are supernatural, they have supernatural rules. Supernatural rules. 
Sometimes we just have to let God lead us even within the relationships. Sometimes we allow the natural disturb us. Oh, you, you come under pressure in marriage. Oh, there are bills to pay, school fees to pay, this and that to pay, this and that to pay. And you forget that there is also an enemy. Sometimes when pressure is coming, you may need to take authority. You shut the door and take authority and tongue for some hours and tell the devil, stay far from this family. And all that we need in this family to move the family forward, come forth, we receive by faith. And then suddenly, tension is dissolved. Things open up. But sometimes we get too mechanical and natural. Problems are coming. You are thinking, calculating. Who is responsible? Where is it coming from? Instead of switching to the supernatural. There is a better way. There is a more excellent way. Glory to God. It is a supernatural. Yeah, we have it on our inside. We are led by the spirit. We walk in the spirit. We are born of the spirit. And in the spirit, we judge all things. And we are judged by no man. Glory to God. He that is from above is above all. Somebody shout, I am above all. So your actions in relationships and your reactions should be led by the spirit of God. Mm -mm. Know that Peter may deny you, but you have to pray for him. Hallelujah. I must know how to be led by the Spirit of God. In marriage, make up your mind not to pile up issues. As issues are coming, deal with them quickly and get them out of the way. Don't pile issues. As they are coming, deal with them, get them out of the way. Deal with them, get them out of the way. Don't let things build up till it becomes complicated. Nip them in the board. So you can have a huge free relationship. And enjoy the peace of God. Not just in marriage, even in friendships. And all kinds of relationships that we're exposed to as believers. We must be led by the spirit. We're led by the spirit. We walk in the spirit. We function in the spirit. We give no room to the devil. We give no room to the flesh. Glory to God. And then we can have very fulfilling relationships. That helps us ultimately to glorify Jesus and to fulfill the plan of God for our lives. Get on your feet. That's all I got for you. Praise God. Has it been a great time of learning and teaching? Praise God. Father, we thank you for the privilege of teaching and learning. And we thank you for the opportunity to bring value to your people's lives and help your people navigate their lives in the wisdom that proceeds from your word. And we decree that we will have great relationships, great, great relationships as believers. Even in Christ Jesus, we will live out reflections of God's goodness to our world. Thank you for the blessing upon everyone. Those that are having relationships that are hurting right now, I ask for healing in those homes. Healing in those relationships. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that. Amen. Let thunder. Glory. I'll be joining Mr. Michael Bush in the next two minutes so we can ask, you know, answer your questions, respond to your emails, and answer your calls and have an interactive moment with you as we continue to bring explanations that helps to consolidate you in Christ Jesus. I'd like you to grab your offerings. Let's give tonight. We give in faith, we give with joy, and every time we give you the opportunity to give, it's an opportunity to advance the purpose of God upon the face of the earth. And I'm so excited. Tomorrow is going to be Sunday. Tomorrow I'm starting a new series of teaching in both the first and second service. You don't want to miss it for anything. It's going to be very exciting tomorrow. Get more people. Invite more people to be part of tomorrow's service. You'll be glad you, you did by the time we're done with the things we'll be teaching tomorrow. Let me also mention very quickly, partners and friends, tomorrow is Partnership Sunday. And I'm just excited that God has brought all of you into a relationship with this ministry. Together we're getting the gospel to the ends of the earth. So tomorrow is partnership and I want to thank you in advance. We're going to have a great time as we partner together for the glorious cause of Christ to get this gospel to the ends of the earth. Lift up your offerings. Let's pray online. There are banking details on TV. There are banking details. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush will read the banking details for you. Lift up your offerings, Father. We give in faith and we give with joy. And we thank you for the privilege of making a difference in the impact of the gospel around the world. Thank you that our offerings are a sweet smell. And for everyone giving tonight, your needs are met supernaturally according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. 
Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. 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 Listen to me once again. You don't want to miss what we're going to be doing with Mr. Michael Bush right now. You don't want to miss it. I want you to, you know, get more people to hook up and don't fail to send in your offerings tonight as we look forward to a great time of service tomorrow for service. The word comes at 8 a.m. GMT plus one. Second service, 11 a.m. GMT plus one. We love you guys. I look forward to seeing the other studio. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service tonight. Woo! Glory! Amen! Trust Amen! You have been blessed by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damina, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com Jakota Naga Brenda Gozo Kule Nemehe Jajo Kotoni Kelina Maha Angra Nonzo Kula Namaha Dedre Negegele Nemosa Say of the Spirit of God there has never been a scarcity of my power all the power that you will ever need, I made available to you at the point of your birth. You were born with all of my power. You were not born deficient. You were born complete. Everything that constitutes me was packaged together to give birth to you, saith God. But you will have to place a demand on the resources that are available to you by regeneration. And you place that demand intentionally so you make that power available in the natural. So you see, saith God, when you do not give yourself intentionally to take off and take from my power then you live the life of defeat. You live a life that is full of apologies. You live a life that attracts sympathy and sorrow. Then you live under undue pressures. Saith God, I never designed for you to live a life of pressure. I designed for you to live a life of rest. But you cannot function in rest from the natural. You only function in rest from the spiritual. From the spiritual. From the spiritual. That's why in my word I said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded when your mind is full of the spiritual possibilities that are available to you. You function from a place of rest and no devil in hell has what it takes to discomfort your position because you exercise superiority over devils you function in your full capacity saith god you function in your full abilities and all of those abilities are abilities that the devil and his cohorts cannot withstand